Hey guys, wanted to give you an update on all of the insanity, or at least some of the insanity that is unfolding on college campuses across the country. I've got updates for you out of Ohio, out of um, California, out of Atlanta, and uh, it's it's honestly, it's wild. Some of the stuff you're not even going to believe. I can hardly believe what I'm seeing here. So let's take a look first at um, some of the scenes out of Ohio. This is the uh, campus at Ohio State. This uh, individual says they've made over a dozen arrests. You can see an aggressive response here from the police throwing peaceful protesters, by all accounts, onto the ground and arresting them. Uh, these are scenes, of course, we've seen playing out on colleges' campuses across the country as states, localities, the entire uh elite political establishment in D.C. support an authoritarian police crackdown on what have been nearly 100 percent nonviolent peaceful protests. Um, students, of course, across the country protesting against what they see and I see as a genocide being committed by Israel using uh, U.S. taxpayer dollars, specifically asking for their schools to divest from anything related to uh, to Israel or to this conflict, and now also responding in protest to these authoritarian crackdowns on their free speech rights. So that is the first image. Let me go ahead and show you the next one. Um, there was a lot that happened at Emory University that is in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. And you can see here, this is a, a tweet from Dr. Tree Parsi. He says, as I wrote a few days ago, to sustain this level of blind support for Israel, the U.S. must erode its own democracy. And what you can see here is a student who was arrested and tased while already arrested and on the ground. I also saw one um, member of Congress who was cheering this, uh, this incident and saying, uh, this is how we do it in the South. So celebration of the authoritarian crackdown on nonviolent protesters from our elite political class. But we are far from done with Emory University. Here is the next incident. Let me go ahead and play this for you. This is the chair of the philosophy department at Emory University who was arrested yesterday. Let me go ahead and pull this up full screen and play this for you. I'm so full. sorry. I'm so sorry. Is there anything I can do for you right now? Yeah, can you call the philosophy department office and tell them I've been requested? Philosophy department? Yeah, call the philosophy department office. I will. I will. What's your? I got you. I got you. I'm. So there you go. Chair of the philosophy department at Emory University being arrested by this individual in a balaclava. I'm sure that is entirely necessary. I mean, the the whole justification for this is that these people are terrorist, anti-Semitic, Hamas sympathizers. The chair of the philosophy department. Okay, uh, we're not done though yet. We've got another image. This is the one that has probably gone the most viral of a, another university professor at Emory who um, actually CNN cameras caught her being not just arrested, but thrown to the ground. Um, she was ultimately charged with assault. And uh, I'm going to play this for you in, in full so you can see what actually unfolds here. But uh, this is Emory economics professor Caroline Folan. And she comes across this violent arrest of a protester, says, what are you doing? And that is enough to cause this officer to throw her on the ground and handcuff her and charge her with assault. So. <laughs> I am a professor! I am a professor! I am a professor! You 
more rabid dogs, more Faustin. It was a peaceful protest until they started fighting troopers. I agree with you. No, you're right. It's right to rebel. I'm going to say, I'm going to say on this. So there you go. Um, this uh, relatively elderly professor of economics at Emory University upset seeing one of possibly her own students thrown on the ground, arrested aggressively by police officers, comes over, says, what are you doing? And they then brutally throw her to the ground and arrest her. And the professor has been charged with assault. And this all played out in front of CNN cameras in Atlanta. CNN actually based in Atlanta. And um, it's astonishing. And the pretext is, you know, oh, these are, these are anti-Semitic terrorists. And of course, on uh, Emory University and many of these college campuses, there aren't even allegations or like one random video floating around that would accuse them of credibly of anti-Semitism or certainly not any kind of violence, even if it was offensive protest. Guess what? There have been all kinds of offensive protests in America that I've wildly disagreed. We see neo-Nazis march in some places in America, including in Ohio, where the initial videos I showed you were from. And, oh, they're allowed to exercise their First Amendment rights. But here, the moment it's speaking up for Palestine, the moment it's trying to draw attention to the atrocities of the Israelis, you are met with an authoritarian, brutal police state crackdown and professors worried about what's going on or joining the protesters or just happening to be in the area getting arrested thrown on the ground and this this elderly economics professor lady charged with assault absolute insanity absolute insanity there is no other word for it um i've got more for you though ready for this one so you'll recall that um university of southern california their valedictorian who had minored in resistance to genocide and is Muslim and had spoken out um, on behalf of Palestinians in her social media accounts. So she is their school valedictorian that they had selected. So ordinarily, you would get to speak at the commencement ceremony. Well, they decided after a bunch of pro-Israel groups basically hounded and harassed them, they decided to cancel her speech. This resulted in a national backlash. Um, she was on CNN. She got to talk about, you know, what was going on. We covered it on Breaking Points. Many other shows covered it as well. So that was step number one. Then after the outcry over that, um, then they decided they were going to cancel all commencement speakers. And now they have just decided they're going to cancel commencement altogether. USC cancels main stage commencement because they are so terrified that students might protest, that they might speak up on behalf of Palestinians as we continue to uncover more and more Israeli atrocities being committed in the Gaza Strip. But it's not, it's not the Israeli government, it's not Netanyahu, it's not Joe Biden who's funding and aiding and abetting this genocide. They're not the villains, no. The peaceful protesters who object to the genocide they're the villains and they're the reason why um you know usc has to cancel their own commencement because they cannot stand the idea of students having the chance to protest and dissent from these policies now if you want to know how we got here how this all ended up being justified and as i discussed before i don't think it's any accident this is coming right now i think um by and large, this is coming now because these students have won the argument. You know, if you look at American public opinion, and we're going to have some more exclusive uh, poll numbers that support this for you next week, so you can look forward to that. We're still digging through all of that, but I think you're going to find it really interesting. Um, majority of Americans, very clear majority, uh, do not support what the Israel has done in the Gaza Strip. 60-40 Americans are against uh, military aid, for their military aid to Israel. 
You have long had overwhelming numbers in favor of a ceasefire. You have a majority of Joe Biden voters saying, yes, this is a genocide. Um, in our poll, just to give you a little sneak peek, you have a third of American voters overall saying this is a genocide, which is pretty extraordinary. You have pretty decent numbers in our polls as well, saying Benjamin Netanyahu should be charged with war crimes. I mean, this is an astonishing turnabout from where American public opinion typically is vis-a-vis -vis Israel. So the problem isn't that Americans disagree with the college protesters. The problem is actually that they agree. And so having lost the debate and Joe Biden tried his little messaging shift, but without changing policy, that's not going to change a damn thing for him. These students are smart enough to see right through that. So what's the next step? If you can't beat them, if you can't win the argument, then I guess they decided they've got to go with the authoritarian crackdown. Now, the justification for this has been provided by uh, Joe Biden's reported favorite morning show. And in particular, the head of the ADL, Jonathan Greenblatt, who is a regular guest on Morning Joe, making some just absolutely outrageous comments. Let me go ahead and, and pull this up so you can hear for yourself. I mean, I don't even know what to say to this, but this is how you end up with the kind of police crackdown that leads to middle-aged economics professors being brutally thrown on the ground and arrested for daring to ask what the hell you're doing to their students. All right, let me pull this up. Wally Shahid, he tweeted this. He, uh, the quote here is, Iran has their military proxies like Hezbollah, and Iran has their campus proxies like these groups, like Students for Justice in Palestine and Jewish Voices for Peace. All right, let me go ahead. About and time and play that the presidents and the campus administrators across the country started again simply saying, you got to play by the rules. I mean, talk about the height of entitlement, right? Thinking that you can just act with impunity wherever you want. You know, it's funny. We're talking about Iran a few minutes ago. Iran has their military proxies like Hezbollah and Iran has their campus proxies like these groups like SJP and JVP that, I mean, look at them. I mean, this is literally like a demonstration in Tehran and you can't believe it's happening in Morningside Heights. So as you know, uh, President Shafiq testified before Congress on Wednesday. She did about time. So as insane as his comments are, equally insane is the fact that they all just sit there and they're like, yeah, they're probably like Iranian proxies. These American college students at Columbia and NYU and Ohio State and University of Minnesota and UT Austin and USC. Yeah, they're just like Hezbollah. They're just like the Houthis. They're just like Hamas. Think about this. And he specifically accuses Jewish voices for peace of being an Iranian terrorist proxy group. Now, one of the um, typical, typical comments or typical anti-Semitic tropes is this notion of Jewish people having dual loyalty, dual loyalty to the U.S. and Israel. Here he is directly accusing a Jewish-led group of having dual loyalty to U.S. apparently, or maybe he wouldn't even say they have loyalty to the U.S., but to Iran, dual loyalty. But when he says it's, it's, it's not anti-Semitic, this is one of the, first of all, I think we need to reflect on how dangerous this kind of rhetoric is because we all know that when it comes to these, um, you know, what are described as Iranian proxy groups, even though they have their own agenda and their own free will and, you know, all of those things, but when it comes to these quote unquote Iranian proxy groups, we know that the U.S. state justifies any level of violence against them with impunity. So when you're equating these student groups with Hezbollah, with Hamas directly, you are inviting against them literally any level of violence. Nothing is off the table if you buy into this completely insane logic. And then the other piece of this is so inconvenient for all of these people who would smear and criminalize, and et cetera, crack down on these protesters as being anti-Semitic, hate marches, mobs, et cetera, 
is the fact that at literally every one of these protests that I've seen, Jewish students are not only a key part, but really at the heart of organizing these protests. So what, they're calling for their own genocide? I mean, it's just, it's so preposterous. And so that always gets erased, that you have so many Jewish students. I mean, how many of these uh, protests have you seen them hosting Passover seders and, you know, the banners, Jewish Voices for Peace and Jews for Palestine and Jewish students are a really key component and Jewish voices in particular have been a really key component of this entire protest movement. So now the attempt is specifically with regard to Jewish, Jewish voices for peace to paint them as, I guess, not real Jews. They are proxies for Iran. I saw another uh, prominent commentator online, uh, Josh Marshall, saying, oh, well, they're just being tokenized. No. Go to one of these protests. Talk to these organizers. There is a disproportionate number of young Jewish Americans who are involved in this pro- in these protests, which completely undercuts their whole narrative about all oh, these are just people who hate Jews and they just want Jews to die, like Benjamin Netanyahu said. It's absolutely outrageous. And it's so clear what's going on. It's so clear. They've lost the debate. They want to change the subject. They want to try to undermine what's going on here they want to try to delegitimize it you see this over and over again so we'll take you know a few videos that show genuinely you know condemnable statements or moments and we're going to use that to smear the entire movement we're going to use that to justify a brutal police crackdown and we're going to use it to try to distract from what is actually unfolding before all of our eyes in the Gaza Strip. And so I'll end with this because I don't want to lose sight of, as I think it's incredibly important to cover these protests. I think it's incredibly important to cover what's happening, especially to these protests in this entire nationwide moral panic and the outrageous tactics that are being used at this point. But I do not want to lose sight of why these college students are protesting. So here we have another um, comment from Dr. Trita Parsi. He says, this is what American students are protesting. Mass graves in Gaza clearly show Israel carried out summary executions. 392 bodies were covered, including children. 267 of them can't be identified. Many appear to have been buried alive. Let's take a listen to this clip from Al Jazeera. Palestinian civil defense team says evidence from mass graves found in the grounds of NASA hospital in Khan Yunus clearly shows the Israeli army carried out summary executions. 392 bodies have been recovered so far, but they've not been able to identify 267 of them. And at least 20 people may have been buried alive at the medical complex. Children were also amongst the bodies recovered. The team is accusing Israel of committing crimes against humanity. So there you go. This is what they don't want you to talk about, to hear about, what they don't want the news to cover. They can't have the focus on, you know, after what happened with the World Central Kitchen, after the way public opinion has so dramatically moved against them, the political class that is unconditionally in support of Israel, literally no matter what they do. These are the sorts of things that they don't want you to see or hear or talk about. Mass grave, hundreds of bodies, including children, including, I know, some with their hands tied behind their backs, including some with patients who were patients at the hospital where this mass grave was, who still had tubes inside their bodies, some apparently who appear to have been buried alive These are the sorts of things they don't want you to focus on. So instead, they're going to find some chant somewhere that they didn't like or that was genuinely offensive. They're going to use it to run an entire news cycle. I mean, we've seen this trick even earlier in the conflict. It's not like this is even the first time that they've pulled this routine. So that's why this crackdown is happening right now on these campus protesters. That's why they're being villainized and smeared as practically being not even they don't even say practically like they are Hamas they are or Shai Devadai the professor at Columbia saying they are literally terrorists they're trying to convince you that our own college kids following the lead of uh, you know the foreign leader 
Benjamin Netanyahu. They're trying to convince you, our own college kids, who are disgusted by a genocide that their government is supporting, are actually terrorists. Just, it's just so outrageous. You can scarcely believe it, but here we are. It's all unfolding in front of our eyes. And, um, you know, we'll make sure to keep you guys updated. Uh, just a couple things to mention. Number one, we are going to have some uh, exclusive polling numbers specifically on Israel-Palestine and on p- how people feel about the conflict, depending on their media consumption preferences. So, which is obviously very relevant in this moment when, you know, not only are they cracking down on protesters, they're getting ready to ban TikTok. That legislation has been signed by the President of the United States. There's another effort to uh, punish any nonprofits that are deemed to have terrorist ties. Gee, I wonder who that is targeting. Actually, one of the lawmakers who was involved in the drafting this bill out and not said this is about cracking down on pro Palestine nonprofits. So, total top down crackdown on any sort of dissent. But if previous over-the-top crackdowns and the response to them, you know, during previous protest eras and civil rights era, if if the response of the American people during those times is any um, indicator of how people may respond to this, I think that they may have made a big mistake. And uh, the last thing I'll say is these protests appear to only be getting bigger and spreading further across the country to more and more school campuses who are taking out the, up the cause, who are outraged not only by what's happening in Gaza, but now outraged by what is happening to them and to their friends and their peers and their professors. So have a great weekend, guys. If there are additional uh, news updates, I, we will make sure to bring them to you and I will see you soon.